as a back-end engineer, you don't want your company to be trending on Twitter because of you. <laughs> <laughs> what they suck you. Hello everyone, hello friends, and you're welcome back to my channel. You're welcome back to Adora Hack. My name is Adora, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about a back-end learning roadmap. If you are someone that wants to learn back-end engineering, back-end development in 2021, this is a video that I would advise you to watch. I'm all about taking the minimal steps to success because I'm a lazy person. I'm not one of those hardworking people that likes to do all the things to get to a particular place. If I can do the minimal things to get me to that point, I will do it right and so because of that i'm going to be telling you the minimal things to learn in terms of your back-end journey are you someone that is on the road to becoming a back-end engineer i'm going to be listing out things and i'm going to be sharing some things with you that i believe that you can learn and without any further ado let's get right into this video but before we get right into the video of today i would really want to thank harper db for sponsoring this video for sponsoring today's video are you tired of dealing with headaches related to database connectivity and setup harper db is a geo distributed database that is solving these challenges by activating speed performance and low latency you can even use their sql and no sql in one powerful tool and it's accessed via an intuitive rest api so you can spin up a free instance and see for yourself i'm going to have a link to the harper db studio in my description so i would urge you to go check it out so the first thing i would want to say is that you should be proficient in a back-end programming language whether it's python go c sharp or javascript there are so many jobs that exist for back-end developers that target these multiple languages and there are different places that you can go check if you go check you know stack overflow if you go check indeed if you go check any of all these different platforms that have like different job listings and stuff you'd see that there are different languages and depending on the one that you want to learn the kind of company you're targeting the job that you're targeting and this kind of skill set that you want to have you can learn one or more of these different languages however i want to advise that whatever programming language you eventually move to is a programming language that is in high demand you, you don't want to learn some kind of programming language and then you are stuck on the fact that you have this skill but it's not a skill that is in demand so nobody's willing to hire you and pay for you to you know use this skill so it's important for that to be something that you are thinking about you know in your programming language of choice that's something that i think is important and i think will be very useful there's one thing which is being proficient in the language which is actually understanding the fundamentals of the language knowing how to use the language on its own and then another thing is using the frameworks of the language for example if you're writing c sharp you might also think about you know picking up asp.net if you're writing ruby then ruby on nails would be your best bet if you're writing javascript and you're trying to be a back-end engineer you're going to be doing a lot with node.js and you might be thinking about okay which framework and express might you know be your best bet if you are writing java you know you might be thinking about spring if you are writing python you might be thinking about django and so on within that context of languages having high demand there are also cases where language frameworks have high demand like if you find a php job today there's a very high chance that that php job is going to be using laravel as opposed to any other framework that exists out there so when you're making all these decisions it's important to you know hold your internet you know do your research properly it's important to think long term and not just follow buzzwords on twitter because you are hearing them or hearing people talking about this new tech or this shiny thing that exists it's new it's shiny it exists but let me be very honest with you a lot of these people don't even use this tech they just th come and talk about it some even go as far as learning the little that they can learn when it comes to the tech so that they can write an article about it on a website that would pay them and they will move on with their lives most of them are not using these things so so i don't buy 
moving up and down like hearing about this technology and blowing going with the wind and anywhere breeze blows you you move because that's what you heard you need to do your research think about whatever it is that you want to choose choose it and stay with it now i'm not saying that you shouldn't embrace change and you shouldn't you know you shouldn't embrace change and you shouldn't be a dynamic person but there is a fine line between being a dynamic person and not standing for anything if that makes sense and that's exactly what i am against once you've learned the language the next thing to think about is version control so it's important to know git because as a software engineer as a back-end person you're going to be writing a lot of code you're going to be working in teams the next thing i want to talk about is system design or architecture as someone that is writing code on the back end you need to understand some level of you know system design architecture even if most times in a company you are not going to be the one to bootstrap that code base most times right sometimes that might be the case but sometimes you're not going to be the one so there's a chance that you are already writing code in an already existing code base that already has the way things are done but you might need to design a new feature to add to that application you might need to find go look for opportunities that help you strengthen that muscle help you grow in that space because it's something that you cannot run away from i wouldn't even if you can run away from i wouldn't even advise you to run away from it because as you grow in your career at some point system design even if it's not something that at the beginning of your career was so you know important because you were in a team where other people were doing it as you grow in your career at some point it's something that you can't run away from it's something that you need to have to take ownership for and at that point if you don't have an idea of how to actually design cloud systems design back-end systems there's going to be a problem and the next thing i'll talk about is you know learning databases at some point you might need to in your application persist data somehow understanding the pros and cons in terms of performance and scalability databases is something that as a back-end engineer you cannot run away from yes sometimes you might be you might just be that person that is calling different external services you know components and all of that at some point in your service you might not need to persist any data there are some services that exist that way but if at some point you need to persist some data you need to know you need to understand databases you need to understand how to query these databases there's also talking about you know security compliance you need to understand security in terms of like architectural patterns that you want to use or okay if i'm using a rest api for example and somebody is making a call to my service how do i take that request and how am i able to you know have some kind of gatekeeper that would help me sanitize that request before that request actually goes to access my service or how am i thinking about certs how am i thinking about certificates in my application how am i thinking about ssl and tls related things how am i thinking about authentication because at the end of the day everything is on the internet it means that there's cyber attackers just waiting for the data that your customers will bring and if you are not as a back-end engineer security conscious if you are not conscious about the fact that some things if i don't foolproof my applications could be vulnerable to allow cyber attackers get access to my service get access to my data and steal it and go and do whatever it is they want to do with it then i'm not ready essentially <laughs> as a back-end engineer you don't want your company to be trending on twitter because of you <laughs> what they suck you yeah you don't want your company to be trending on twitter because of you so this is something that an advice that you know you thoroughly think about there are other things that i believe are important in your journey to becoming a back-end engineer there's one that i did not mention already which is testing as a back-end engineer you're going to need to write tests as a software engineer you're going to need to write tests like I hear that there are some businesses that don't write it and I'm afraid I can't work in that kind of company I'm sorry because it's just it would just be like I'm old I'm using cello tape to hold everything because if I go and check in code somewhere it's just I'm going to spoil something somewhere I don't have energy for that so like testing is something that I would advise as a back-end engineer you pick up as well even if it's 
just unit testing integration testing and being able to write end-to-end -end tests being able to at least do these three even if you can't do other kinds of tests is something that i would definitely advise because it just gives you confidence that ah, okay this is what i wrote i'm sure of what i wrote and my code is not going to disappoint me randomly and once in a while it will right and it also depends on the quality of tests that you write but that's like a whole different topic but testing is important sha. so on that note i am done i hope that this roadmap is something that you can pay attention to. I believe it will help you if you follow it step by step. I also want to mention that there's no one size fits all way of doing these things. So if this works for you, then that's great. If it doesn't work for you, that's also great. But I hope that it does. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. If you liked it, please make sure that you give it a thumbs up, yeah? If you're not subscribed to me, please make sure that you subscribe. The subscribe button is here, it's somewhere here. Thank you so much again for watching this video to the end and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.